Hello, welcome to Black for Art Museum's virtual tour presented to you at UH's Take Your Child to Work Day. My name is Katherine Veneman and I'm the Curator of Education from Black for Art Museum. And joining me today are docents Leila Abbasi and Noelia Vargas Bolivar. Uh, we're going to give you a little glimpse of what Black for Art Museum is. For more information about what's currently on view, check out blackforartmuseum.org. Welcome. Hi, welcome. Um, a brief intro about the museum. The museum was founded in 1974 by Sarah Campbell Blacker, who was a very important art patron and philanthropist. The museum had a permanent collection at one point, but now the pieces from the permanent collection are housed at the Museum of Fine Art. The Blacker, as today, only hosts temporary exhibitions of contemporary art, meaning that it showcases works by artists who are still alive. So the artist whose work we're going to be seeing today, her name is Stephanie Sihuko. She's a Filipino-American artist. And as we're about to talk about, her work is not the normal type of artwork you might think of, like paintings or sculpture. She does deal a little bit with sculpture, but it's mainly types of art like photography and installation. So, so is this an installation? Mm -hmm. How do we approach an installation? How do we see at an installation? Uh, an installation work is a type of work that is pretty unique in how you approach it um, for the most part. Installation typically means it's a work that can't necessarily just be hung on the wall or put on a pedestal. It's, it's a big piece that needs to be physically installed into the gallery. Um, and the type of work that we're going to be talking about that you see a lot in contemporary art deals less with a physical representation like a painting of somebody and more with different themes that are thought of by the specific imagery that we see. Some of the themes that the artist talks about in her work uh, deal with identity and history and the modern age as well. Um, let me see. So, so if, I'm, if I'm thinking about the themes of this work of art, do we'll have to look at the installation from different sides and how do I make a story about this piece or what, what story does it make? So let's start, uh, let's start approaching this artwork by first talking about immediately what do we see? Well, um, what you probably saw when you first saw this and what most people who, um, if they had gone to see this work in person while it was still at the museum, the first thing that your eyes would be drawn to is the focal point of the work, which again is just the center point of the, the work of art that all the other aspects of the work kind of guide your eyes toward. In this case, the focal point is the two dresses that we see in the middle of the work. Uh, so if this is the focal point, it means that it's the most important point of the installation and everything else around will be uh, thought of in relation to the focal point, correct? Mm -hmm. So let's look closer at the focal point of the work, which is the two dresses. The dress on the left, it is a green dress that is meant to look a lot like what women in the early 1900s would have worn. And the dress on the right is a in the style of traditional Filipino dress, but it's let's 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 look at the fact that the two dresses are two very different materials. The dress on the left, the one in the green, and you might be able to see it's not the only thing in the work that has that same green color, but it is the most prominent one that you see. The green color is a shade of green called chroma key green, which is also what is used for green screen. So anytime you need to project onto some, some sort of background 
um, or it's used a lot in movies for special effects as well. Uh, it's also, you can find it in anything as simple as just different types of filters on your phone. The green screen is what you used for that. Uh, the, the other dress has a checkered background. That checkered background is actually the same background you would see if you open up Photoshop, the Photoshop program, which essentially is a computer program that allows you to edit your photos, however you might need. So now let's think about why do you think, Noelia, that the artist is using the green screen and the Photoshop in this work? What, what kind of story, or how does that help to help us figure out what the story of the work is? Well, I think um, both of the dresses are interacting with all of the images, images around them. And I know uh, the artist took the idea of the images uh, when she typed the word ecstatic in Google. So all the little tiny elements around the dresses uh, are meant to represent the word ecstatic or the idea of ecstatic. So if we're looking at the dresses, uh, the dress on the left, we will project or we will, we will put the images on top of the dress and then the dress will be made invisible. And then on the chroma key green, uh, the images will be projected on. So I think she's talking about identity and she wants to express the fact that there are two dresses. Uh, she's expressing this idea of dual identity. One, the American one in which images are projected on and the Filipino one, the ones uh, the images will be uh, projected on as well, but then the dress will disappear in the background, similar to what will happen if you were using the checker pattern in Photoshop. But why are all the images like collage or like put in a very disorganized way throughout the, the installation? There's not a certain order. Oh, and I see emojis too. Mm -hmm. So that's another important thing to think about when you're approaching uh, contemporary art that is more conceptual or less like just a painting on a wall. That's something that you need to think about when you're approaching artwork like this because every little detail is really important and plays a role. So thinking about the placement of the physical objects, since we can see from this angle that most of what's on the stage is 2D printouts that are kind of stood up in a way. That makes you think a little bit more about 2D images or images you might see on your computer or say Instagram, if you have an Instagram account or any type of social media account. Um, if, if you are on Instagram, pretty much the only way you're going to see other people or get other information is through images. That's just the way that that form of social media works. And it kind of like Instagram puts a lot of images in your face all at once that you have to kind of sort through on your own. So that's pretty similar to the way that some of these images are placed in this artwork. That's, that kind of shows that even something that might might seem as unimportant as where on the actual stage in the room certain objects will be placed, that in of itself is also something that plays a role with contemporary art. In this case, it's making us think more about the idea of the internet and how maybe your identity can be affected by the internet if, you're, if you have a social media account, the way that your identity can be presented on the internet is affected in of itself by the internet. So if this piece is about identity and we're looking at two mannequins in the front of the installation or the center of the installation being the focal point, um, but I'm also seeing many other uh, different props around the installation, is this piece a portrait or a stage set or a still life? Well, this work 
because it is contemporary art, it kind of can be if it, 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 the actual definition of it can change a little bit, but this, the closest thing you could relate this to is maybe a type of self-portrait or um, instead of when you would paint a picture of, of a person, if you were the artist painting a picture of somebody who pay, uh, paid you to paint, uh, create a portrait of them, instead of just painting an image, instead what we're doing is we're taking different visual aspects or objects or images and putting them together to create a specific meaning or a story or talk about something specific that the artist wants to talk about. In this case, it's her way of talking about the idea of dual identity in the age of the internet and how identity, especially dual identity, can be projected onto or can be dismissed or highlighted only certain parts of or can be in, affected in all these different ways, especially by the internet and how you interact with other people online. So I, my other question is, if um, I'm looking at this piece and it's not a sculpture, it's not a painting in the wall, it seems like the artist is using non-traditional mediums to talk about contemporary issues uh, and that makes up a work of art that is considered conceptual art, it means that every time that the, peop the audience comes to the uh, Blackbird Art Museum, are you going to find pieces like this? There may be pieces that are similar in terms of how the art deals with each other. Like you might see another work of art that is an installation work like this with all these different props, but modern and contemporary art is not limited to just being paintings or sculptures. It can be any type of variety of methods. It can be something as complex as what we're seeing in front of us, or it could be something as, simil as simple as a photo. There is no strict definition. So you're always going to see something different anytime you go encounter contemporary or modern art. It's never going to be the same. So what we just looked at was, uh, again, it was called Dodge and Burn Visible Storage. The next work we're about to look at is called The Visible Invisible which is actually the title of the exhibition that it was featured in. So if you were in the actual building to come see this exhibition, you would be the, the Dodge and Burn Visible Storage was in the downstairs part of the building. You'd come upstairs to one of our upper level galleries and you would enter the room and be faced immediately by the three mannequins in these three dresses. So Noelia, what's immediately similar between these dresses and what we just saw, what's what's interesting to note about these dresses specifically? Well, the use of chroma key green, number one. Um, they're both, they're all of, both the, of the installation have historical dresses. In this case, we see three dresses. One reference to the Plymouth Pilgrim. Uh, we have another one reference to the Antebellum South and the other one to the colonial revolution. So in one hand, we see the dresses functioning as a screen or backdrops in which any image can be projected on or superimposed on. And on the other hand, you know, we have the artist pointing out to the idea that whatever image or whatever pattern is projected on the dresses will be projected on pieces that symbolize an inaccurate representation of histories. And also how history can be modified and edited and in a way reconstructed. And that idea of reconstructing history, um, I think it's, it goes in relation to the background of the installation. We have, we can see a shot of maybe what he, maybe the artist process of making the dresses, but the fact that the artist, uh, the artist is using non-traditional mediums, meaning photography, um, she's utilizing 
photography installation is not only sculpture or painting, but a mix of different disciplines, one. And then also the fact that the kind of language she, she uses to describe um, the meaning of the pieces, language, visual language in terms of photo, uh, chroma key green, the, the backdrops that resembles the Photoshop, um, checker pattern, all of those imaginaries are pertinent to today's technological world. So that makes the pieces very inclusive because anybody, whether have an art background, art background or not, will be able to identify different sections or different elements of the installation. And that's the beauty about contemporary art. It's, it's very inclusive and it, it uses non-traditional mediums Many times artists use non traditional mediums to tackle uh, contemporary issues. So they're both talking about, both installations are talking about contemporary issues. Okay, well, thank you for giving us this little glimpse of, of Blackfer Art Museum and Stephanie Siuko. We encourage you all to uh, check out our website and learn about our upcoming exhibitions and programs. So thanks very much.